So what's up guys, let's go live for a little bit here and talk about some things. Um, I'm sorry to let everybody down tonight. I know I promised you I was going to go into um, some conspiracy stuff uh, about the moon landing, but uh, there's something else I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, job growth in this nation. Um I don't remember how many jobs were lost during the Great Recession. Um, I think I did read somewhere there was an average of um, like 17 factories or mills or something that was closing down a day for like t two years or something. I forgot how many years it was, but it was an average of 17 that was closing a day. And these was in a lot of small town America. I mean, you know, a town of like 5,000 people and it has a steel mill that employs 1,500 people and that steel mill with those jobs produces the revenue that keeps the local Walmart, the local grocery store, your local gas station, all that in business. Well, when one of those factories closes and 1,500 people lose their jobs, city dries up. See, there's a city here in Gaston, Alabama, and, or, and, and at one time it uh, was a city of about 65,000 people. I think it was the fourth largest city in Alabama. And it had the uh, Goodyear tire plant there. <coughs> and it employed about 15,000 people. And they closed that plant. And I think now they, they've reopened uh, some of it. Um, but it's um, they only employ like 1,500 people. And Gadsden's went from a city of 65,000 to 29,000. It used to have like five, six A schools. Now it's got like one five A. That's it. But um, anyway, so I want to talk. So during the Great Recession, we lost millions of jobs. Now, during the Obama administration, jobs came back. Um, and when he left office, we was right at full employment. I think it's dropped a little bit more since Trump's been in there. But, uh, I mean, I, you know, we're back at full employment. But the problem is, is I, you know, I read about these jobs. And uh, right now, I think the president is claiming to create 1.65 million jobs um somebody else put the estimate at 1.1 million and somebody pointed out that i think the last year of the obama administration there were two million jobs created but where are these jobs at and how much are they paying um i read that yeah obama brought these jobs back but they're also paying 23 percent less people are making 23 percent less than what they were in 2009 so not only have things gone up people's taking a 25 percent pay cut in eight years i mean we're making a lot less money um than what we um used to i think i read somewhere one time that uh, it was about the average salary a year and you know i think the average salary a year in 1980 was around thirty thousand dollars and twenty nine thousand dollars and that's about there now. And think about what the cost of stuff was in 1980 compared to now. But anyway, <coughs> I mean, you can still live good off $40,000 a year. I mean, if you're a single person, I don't see how family does it. You know, I see stuff about a family of four making $60,000 a year. And I'm like, wow, how are they paying for things? You know, um, I just, I can't imagine that, that the expense that would incur. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to go back to these jobs. I mean, where are these jobs at? I mean, now I know there's this like this Amazon plant. They're looking all over the place, and it's supposed to create a hundred thousand. They're supposed to create fifty thousand jobs that pay a hundred thousand dollars a year. And Birmingham's in the run for it. But these people have to be um, like they're college educated, you know. And years ago, if you don't go to get a trade, you know, years ago, my dad told me I needed to go get a trade. And now I look back and I was like, you know, I should have went and learned how to do a trade. You know, I should have went to trade school. I went to college, never finished, and still haven't gone back. And I tell myself every summer that I'm going back that, that fall, and I'd never go back. And hopefully one day I'll get motivated to go back and do it. But unless you have a college degree... And not even a college, just a degree, a master's. You're you're gonna have to, and, and something that's special. I mean, you, you're not gonna do anything. I, mean, I know people with college degrees all the time, but you know, um, can't do anything with it. I mean, uh, and some of that's the fault with, your, with majors. But the point I'm trying to make is we have now changed from a industrialized nation. 
uh, you know, blue collar jobs to one of technology and um, tech technology and 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 being of higher, uh, you know, having to have a degree from higher learning. And, you know, some people don't want to go to college. Some people just want to go work. I mean, you know, uh, and unfortunately, we don't have those jobs. And President Trump's promised re-industrialization of America, you know, would stop the bleeding with it by lowering the corporate tax rate. You know, you think it's at 35%. So these guys are paying 35% in taxes on the dollar before you ever even sold anything, I mean, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. No wonder they're shutting the plants down and going to Mexico and, um, or, or Asia and paying somebody 25 cents an hour. I mean, uh, it, it's just, you know, it, you know, the place made 26, 27 bucks here an hour and pay a 35% tax or shut it down and go overseas and pay somebody 20 cents an hour and, you know, you're making a lot more money on it. And then you're still paying the workers here only eight dollars an hour. It's just, you know, but until we, I don't know why we can't get back to that. Because I drive around here and I see Birmingham, and I see all these, you know, closed down buildings and factories that were heavy steel industry, and uh, and they're all gone. And Birmingham was called the Pittsburgh of the South because it had the four major. Things to create steel. What is this? Iron, ore, coal, and metal, or something like that. But it has to, but it had all. But, but Birmingham was a heavy steel industry. We've still just got a few steel and coal jobs, but nothing like we did. And you know, um, I don't know if there's a way to ever bring those jobs back. But if we don't bring back some type of jobs for guys who don't want to go to college, don't go to trade school, that make good. You know, a lot of these auto plants, uh, you know, I mean, God, look what's happened to our auto industry here now. I mean, the Obama administration claimed they saved it with, or was it Bush? It was, well, Bob, Bush bailed out the banks. Obama bailed out the auto industry, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, they said they bailed it out, but God, go look at Detroit. You know, look what they're, um, look what, I mean, look, that, that city's lost, like, I think, like, 65% of its population. I mean, none of the jobs are there anymore. I was reading this man, about in the 60s, he was retired, and some of, uh, he could, you know, when he was coming up, he could be at one job, get mad, walk across the street, fill an application, be working, and won the next day, and he said his son tries to do that, and he says, you know, it's just not there. <laughs> and they're not coming back, so, um, that, uh, that's what, um, I don't think there's any way to fix it, but, um, what's going to continue to happen is there's going to be a greater divide between, um, the rich and the poor as a result of losing these blue-collar jobs because, that was your middle class, and now the middle class is beginning to wither away. And um, if anybody who's ever studied any of it in communism, Marx said that when the middle class withers away, there will be the um, proletariat, and you know there will be the, the bourgeoisie, and that's when. Um, the communist revolutions going to take place. And Marx actually meant for the communist revolutions to take place in like Germany, England, the United States, because they was industrialized nations. Um, he never meant for it to take place in Russia or, you know, China or any of those places because they were, were peasant nations. That's why Leninism was adopted. You know, it was trying to apply the principles that was meant, meant for a communist or for industrialization into one that was meant for, um, you know, peasants, and that's why it just never failed. And I'm not sitting there advocating communism by no means. Please don't think that. Nor am I a communist. I'm a, you know, I'm a capitalist. But there's a way to look at that too. If, if you know, if, if capitalism is based on survival of the fittest, then is the natural evolution of capitalism not communism? Because if the middle class is gone and then you just got the proletariat, does the, you know, I mean, that's, that's the basis of the whole argument though. And, you know, 
that what Mark said would happen, but by no means am I advocating that. I just hope we can find a way to get back um, some jobs in this country for people, you know, that pay a decent wage. And, you know, like Trump's wanting to hit nations with a 35% tax that build their, you know, that produce their goods outside the United States and sell it back here. And, you know, uh, just speaking to blue-collar voters and, you know, um, hopefully we can get those jobs back or at least make an attempt that, to do something. I mean, we need a minimum wage increase. We haven't had a minimum wage increase in this country since 2007. You know, people are making $7.25 an hour. You know, you, know, you can't even buy a, a combo meal for that, you know, for an hour's work. You think about working 40 hours at $7.25 an hour. You know, it's just horrible. Um, but anyway, that was just what I want to talk about tonight was job loss and where are these jobs at and you know i mean the the jobs they're creating are eight seven eight dollar an hour jobs they're not good paying jobs that was the whole point of the video i mean sorry you know the the, the jobs that that we lost and the ones we've created are eight nine dollar an hour paying jobs and um you know we lost a substantial amount of our wealth during that and um you know so it's not like they're 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 bringing back high paying jobs you know not, uh, or under Obama or Trump, you know, these are not huge paying jobs. And then a lot of union workers had to take pay cuts too. I know the coal miners did, and I'm pretty sure the steel industry did too, and uh, those car manufacturers. But anyway, uh, just uh, kind of a vent or in lesson two tonight on jobs and jobs created in this country and what really happened during the. Uh, Great Recession and how things are headed. But anyway, um, hope everybody had a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. and we'll be back soon.